perspectives, different views, one voice. All right, so welcome to the LDM Perspective. Uh, this is another episode we're doing. Thank you all for joining us. I'm your host, Mo, and I'm also joined here by my friends and my brothers, Kojo. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm Kojo. <laughs> sorry, I forgot that. I've got myself on mute. Yeah, you've also got Cam here. And Ali. So in today's episode, our question is, is it our duty to educate people on racism? Um, and the reason why I've also, we've left it as people because it's not just white people, it could be Asian people or anyone that's non-black into the whole racism issue. Um, and also when we're talking about racism, we are including the structural racism as well in that definition. So it's anything that can inhibit our access to finance, education, wealth or resources so with me i reckon that it is our duty to educate people on racism and and the main reason why i feel that is because i feel if we leave something as important as this in the hands of others it's either not done correctly or um, it's not done to the standard in which we want so for example we've had many opportunities in terms of the government creating some kind of group um, to find out in terms of racism, like in the last five years, I know the government have set up some kind of forum or group, and in each of them, they haven't actually carried out any recommendations. And I do believe in terms of his story, if you're leaving someone else to educate our community, then they're not really going to do it the justice in which we want or how we feel it should be done. Um, so yeah, I kind of just want to leave it open to you guys. Let me know what you think. Um, uh, I think Kojo, you definitely wanted to come in and mention something in terms of how you feel about this and what your reasons are. Yeah, thanks, Mo. Um, I think the question of whether it is our duty to educate people about racism is something that I go back and forth on. Um, and I think the conclusion I've come to is that it's not necessarily our duty to educate people about racism. And I guess in this sense, when I'm talking about people, me specifically, I'm talking about Caucasian people. And the reason why I'm raising this is the systems of racism was actually put in place. It's not by accident that there is racism. It was put in place for a purpose. And it was not put in place by people that do, do not actually understand racism. So when we talk about education, <clears throat> education could stem from a position of ignorance and I don't feel like in these kind of situations regarding if we're talking about systematic racism and how that affects black people it wasn't put in place from ignorance it was put in place on purpose there were so many different things that they've done to ensure that that exists and that gives them that privilege that they have so when we talk about education education is well and good because it informs people it makes people feel like there's something being done it makes people feel like you know, we are making steps, we are moving towards a kind of like a ideal solution kind of stuff. But then um, I use the example of the, the lady that called the police on the black man in the park who was bird watching. Now that actually understood what institutionalized racism is. She called the police and she highlighted two main things. I am under threat and this there's a black African-American man. Now to say that from a I don't know what her background is, but she actually understands that. You don't necessarily need to educate this woman about her privilege, because she actually understands the institution that's been set up and how that benefits her. Hence the reason why I'm more on the angle of, it's not necessarily education, because they actually know about this racism and the system that they've set in place. I think I'd like to leave it here, just to hear what everyone else has to say on this. I guess, so yeah, the question is, is our duty to educate people on racism? Um, and and as as you you kindly as you rightly addressed Kojo, and um, when we say our, I assume we mean black people. But correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm assuming it's how, in in my opinion, is how we educate white people um, on on racism. And w when when this question was raised, I I sort of had to look at it in a practical sense. And what does educating people on racism look like? Because I guess. You've got it on a macro level and you've got it on a micro level. So I guess I would say the macro level is where it's that, that education 
is, is advanced through widespread media. So that could either be through social media, people speaking on videos, um, or on or, or on other media channels such as Facebook or Instagram, or it could just be in mass media. So it could be writing articles for big corporations like the BBC, um, Guardian, Daily Mail, and sort of addressing it in that way. And I guess dealing with it on a micro level could just be dealing with it amongst educating, say, a police officer on racism, um, or educating a work colleague or even a friend. So that it comes it comes on a micro level in that respect. But for me, as as I was addressing the question, I think for me I'd have to say no, I don't I don't necessarily think it's our duty. I think the word duty invokes a burden or, or an obligation. And I, I personally I don't think it should be a burden or obligation for everyone to speak on it. Firstly, because not every black person is educated well enough to even educate on this concept. And like when you unpack the term racism, there's so much things that go into it. There's microaggressions, there's overt, there's covert racism, there's structural racism, there's all it's just different nuances. So not every single black person is educated enough to sort of, you know, address things in terms of like or educating white people on racism. And if you make it a duty, then what you could find is you could find you could have it as a duty on people with big platforms potentially perpetuating ignorant views. And you get situations like, for example, you get someone like Kanye West saying slavery sounded like a choice, or Lil Wayne saying he, does, he doesn't see racism, or even someone like Candace Owens saying race is not an issue when she was younger, or saying police brutality is a myth. You know, you get these sort of people perpetuating these sort of things. And if, as I said, if you place a duty, then that's that's the risk that you run. These sort of people coming out with these sort of views who aren't really educated on these views and in my opinion aren't really qualified to even be speaking on 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 on, on racism um i think even as far as going as far as like examples within the uk i remember when dizzy rascal spoke on newsnight in 2008 about having a black prime minister and for me i don't think he was the most qualified person to speak on that but you might say because of the platform he has um it, it might be worth imposing a duty on him because he's able to speak out and his opinion might mean something. But that doesn't mean he's got the right opinion to be, to be advancing on that particular topic. So for me, I think that's, 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 that's the first point. Um, and I just think, secondly, I think having that, put, placing that duty on someone could be causing someone to relive traumatic experiences, you know, that evoke feelings of, like, pain, fear, outrage and all of that can be psychologically damaging i think if 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 it's placed on us to to educate them as i said it 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 brings up those feelings i remember in 2007 i went to the elmina castle which was a slave castle in ghana and i remember i was um we were doing a tour in the castle and the tour guide was saying that during the summer they get a lot of american tourists that come um and when they have the tours they have to separate black people from white people because when a lot of the black tourists hear about what happened in the castle they get it, it, it drives up so much emotion within them that they just like get completely abusive towards white people and just start saying like the worst things you can think of because at that particular point is evoking those sort of emotions and as a and i just feel like because of those things i, I don't think it would be right for it to be a duty i think it's important to teach these sort of things because I think it's key that um, education is put forward on the things I spoke about in terms of microaggressions, overt, covert racism, and structural racism. But that needs to be done by people who are qualified to speak on this, people who understand what they're talking about, people that can identify certain situations. Because I guess the argument you could say is if you don't say anything, then you're then you're you know you're part of, you know not educating could mean you're becoming part of the problem and not the solution but in some cases by speaking you could become part of the problem because you could perpetuate ignorant views anyway so sometimes speaking up doesn't necessarily help um but that's just that's just like some of the opinions i've come to as a result of like initial thoughts with this hold on i didn't um, want to follow on from what you're saying cam um, just to bring you back in um i think if we here collectively today except that it's not something that we expect from everyone as a duty, because um, I think that would be highly ridiculous and unachievable. But let's say there are particular individuals um, 
And I'll give an example. There's that guy, I'm not sure if everyone here has seen him, Emmanuel Acho. He's got a, uh, a YouTube series where it's an uncomfortable conversation with a black man. And I feel something like that, in, especially in the way he articulates himself and explaining the different dynamics, especially even talking to the family and the young child of, um, does he fear white people? And he compares it to him being cautious uh, and, and the relationship being similar to water and uh, electricity. Um, I feel it would take someone like us, as a, it's someone from our community to have those kind of conversations yeah. with uh, another race, as opposed to someone else providing that information or having that kind of discussion would 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 you say in that sense if we i don't know assign that duty at least to someone from our community yeah i i agree i think i think if it's assigned to someone from the community who, who who's qualified to speak on it i think that that definitely makes sense you look back as far as like um 1960s america and you had that burden bestowed upon people like martin luther king and malcolm x they, were, they had that duty to speak on those sort of issues. Even going forward, yeah, you know, to the 90s, you had Al Sharpton. You, there were people that were qualified to speak on those issues. But as I said, where it becomes a breeding ground for, like, especially when you, you might even bring people like the black celebrity into the black celebrities, in, in, in most instances, are not even qualified to be speaking on those things. Because they can't, they can't, they can't give an educated opinion on it. And that's, 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 that's my concern. I think that's, that's the risk you run where, when it's made a duty. But, I certainly do agree that yeah, it, it would be worth assigning it to someone. Can I can I say a few words on this? Um, and it's Michael here, and I think to answer your question very briefly, is it our duty um, to educate people on racism? No, um, the duty lies on the British government uh, because apparently they have something called British values, which mean that we meant to aspire to democracy, rule of law, individual liberty. Uh, mutual respect, tolerance of those people with different faiths and beliefs. Now, um, if that's what the British government is saying our values, uh, then I think it's not our job to be explaining to people what racism meant because the race and police should come in um, and be, you know, sorting all that out. Now, obviously, that's not the case. That is definitely not the case because you have, you have black people being abused by police in this country. There have been about 1,900 deaths in police custody since the 1990s. Um, so there is, there, there is no, no one is taking up this, this systematic um, and stake sanctioned uh, uh, attack or resolution on racism. What I will say is that it's in our interest if we become experts on African history, but also on black and African culture. Because once we become experts in that, and you know, again, if Dizzy Rascal knew two two bars and it was on new on Newsnight, he could have dropped a couple of lyrics and then rapped to the end. Do you see what I'm saying? And people said calm birth. But my guy just came on there. Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like my man was coming on the news and like I'm telling you, it was like, if there was ever a representation of Black Britain, that was the worst. The worst. And he was half Ghanaian, bro. Half Ghanaian. He let the Ghana side down, bro. <laughs> But this is my point, and this, this is what I'm saying. So it's not our duty to be, we shouldn't be demonstrating as victims of racism. We shouldn't be having to wear our, 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 our scars and show, say, people, look at our scars of racism. No. What needs to happen is that we need to be, this in our interest for people to know that racism exists, but the way we do it is by basically being masters of, of our culture, of our history. And then, and then it means that, listen, when it comes to racism, you're like, but bruv, let me drop two lyrics. You know what I'm saying? You tell me mathematics started in Greece. I don't think so. About 1,500 years before Thales and Pythagoras, Maz in Egypt was doing, was, doing, was doing geometry, was doing algebra. So what are you talking about, monkey? Huh? Who's monkey? Bruv, can you count? Two, two bars. You see what I'm saying? Keep it moving. So that's what I'm saying. I think we need to start being advocates of our history yeah rather than trying to always say look at me i've been hurt i've been hurt because that kind of system <laughs> never goes anywhere you know what i'm saying it's the, yep. like the victim like imagine this this is the, if you do if you watch the epstein um documentary on netflix yeah how are victims of mass rape going to the government to say listen can you please arrest this guy because he's raping people that doesn't make sense apparently we, we live in a world where there's rule of law that does not make sense but it happens 
see what I'm saying? So we have to be understand how the system works and navigate it from that point of view. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, good, good shout in the audience at the moment on this. So the question is, is it our duty to educate um, people on racism? For me, I'm against it. And um, that's exactly what Michael just addressed him to as well. Um, definitely for me, no. And um, for me, part of learning is about opening yourself up to people ex and experience and seeking to understand, right? So people should learn to seek. It shouldn't be up to us primarily. So what I meant by that, it shouldn't be us as a black to be educating any part of um, whether it's white, whether it's Chinese, whether it's Indian, it shouldn't be because as what Kojo just addressed into it, the, they already knew what their agenda was regarding race. They already knew what they wanted to do. So it's not about ignorance at all. It's about knowing what they want to get out of it. And obviously the, the results and the result what, it is still going on and it is still happening. So, and another thing as well, I'm going to add into this as well. My second point is analogy. So the reason why I'm breaking it down like this is like, as a young man like me, I've got a child or we have a child or we have a nephew or, or, or niece or whatsoever. What you want to do as that, as that person, you want to educate that, that young child to grow up. So you will give them all, you will teach them all what you know as a person to he or she. But you will think to yourself, right? Everything that you've known, you're going to teach that person, he or she, right? When they grow up, they're going to take exactly what you've told them or what you've taught them. It's not, the, it's not the case because they don't want, it's not everything that you will tell them or you'll teach them that they're going to observe, um, observe in. They're not going to do that. They're going to take selective. They're going to be selective. And the selective side of what they're going to take is what they feel is convenience for them. So the reason why I'm giving that analogy is exactly like um, teaching or teaching um, white people or whatever other race about racism, because we will give them everything that we have, give them all our ideas and so on. But at the same time, they will say, no, what? it's not relevant. That is not my part. That's not what I want, you know. I'm going to take what I feel that is right out of that. And yes, yeah, so within that sense, it will be feeling a burden. So that means every black person that walks around the world or in across the street or in, in, in a corporation or any part of, of society will feel like, okay, when they see racism, they have to teach that person, oh, that is wrong, that is racism. No, it's, it's actually a lot of things burden for us alone because we've got our own issue, we've got our own problem. And as a, as a black person, we've been through a lot. So we want to learn what we need to do. So I feel like the question is definitely no. It's not our duty. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hear what you're saying. But I feel like, let's say, like, for example, of us educating ourselves, knowing our full history, whatever. And then we correct someone else that says something wrong. Aren't we now still taking on that duty of educating someone else? It's one of them ones. Yeah, let me, I don't know. Yeah. Let me come in here quickly because I feel like I, I must say I stick by my old argument to say that I don't think it is our duty because it depends on what you mean by that education. And I think there's certain stuff that um, Cam touched on that I agree with, but there's some of it that because about people like Al Sharpton, I don't know, Louis Farrakhan, all these kind of, where are they now? I, I, I find it difficult to, to understand these supposed spokesperson where they are now, because I don't see them. So I feel like it's damaging when we kind of appoint one person as a spokesman, because we know from things that we've seen, even looking at whole Martin Luther King, uh, learning about um, Malcolm X, learning about the nation of Islam, you can see that some of these people can be bought. They do infiltrate these organizations. You know, a lot of these so-called leaders have kept quiet for a long time. And I'm thinking, what is their reason for that? And they become a bottleneck. So what happens is that when you're having the people that these issues are, they're facing these issues on a daily basis, they become almost like a stumbling block to get in having these kind of conversations. So I feel like, yes, one thing I'll definitely say is on us to educate ourselves. And I totally agree with a lot of the stuff that Michael was saying regarding your heritage, regarding your culture, regarding your tradition. Because when that dialogue does happen, that's when you can impart that knowledge. 
Do you know what I mean? When that dialogue happens, you can impart that knowledge. But the thing I was just going to add to what you were saying, Mo, is that I also feel like in our walks of life, we have to be brave and call it out when we see it. And I feel like that's, that's a bit different from the kind of like the mantra that we have that we need to go around educating people. That YouTube video about um, uncomfortable conversations with a black man. Why are you having these uncomfortable conversations? It's very interesting, don't get me wrong, and it's very intriguing and he's quite articulate. So I wouldn't mind someone like that talking because he doesn't know what he's talking about. Do you know what I mean? But then I feel like sometimes that becomes a stumbling block and I feel like it's on us regarding our walks of life to educate people when those dialogue does happen. Because a lot of the times, I'm not sure what kind of environments you guys work in, but people are uncomfortable having conversations. White people are very, very, very uncomfortable having those conversations. And there will be times where you bring it up and they don't even want to talk about it. So, so you can't say that it's on you to educate them when they don't even want to have that dialogue in the first place. Do you know what I mean? So I just have to then circle back to a lot of the stuff that Michael was saying, just regarding what the whole kind of UK stands for, the whole ideology of democracy, that you go into other countries and you topple those economies because they're not democratic, because people are being oppressed. Are you having a laugh? It makes no sense to me. It's an oxymoron. It doesn't make sense. But then on your own back, you can't fix your problems. You don't want to deal with it. Come on. Jump in. Um, just to follow up on the point Koja was making. Um, I agree with the premises, like um, everything you said, but I don't think I agree with the conclusion that it's not um, on us to educate people. I think I would phrase my answer to the question differently. I wouldn't use the word duty. I'd use the word responsibility because they have different connotations. So duty is like a moral commitment to something, like you have to do something, like you have a duty to, to look after your kids. Well, as responsibility has that connotation of you can do it without supervision. So I would say if you have the tools, if you have the platform, if you have the education, if you have the time, then you can assume the responsibility of educating people on racism. Because if you just left it up to people to educate themselves, there are certain concepts, certain interpretations of racism, like take, for example, systemic or organizational racism. Some people don't, or let's say, let's use the word discrimination. So take the word systemic discrimination. Some people, black and white, don't believe that exists. They just believe in the concept of interpersonal discrimination. So racism, as in you don't like black people, you don't like Jewish people, etc. They don't believe the way things are structured, there can be disparities which affect a certain group of people. Now, it's not like, it's not because they're stubborn or obstinate, it's just because they haven't had someone explain those concepts to us, I mean, to, to, to them. So if you're familiar with this concept, if you've done the reading, if you have the data to back it up, and you happen to be in a context where you have the, the opportunity is right for you to explain it to a group of people, say to your friends on Facebook, or to, if you're in the thread on the Facebook, whatever, I'm, I'm not on Facebook, so um, I, I probably wouldn't be in that situation. Um, I think you do have a responsibility, you know? Um, it's like, what's that Spider-Man quote? Uh, With great power comes great responsibility. So it's not a duty. Spider-Man doesn't have a duty to save people, but he assumes the responsibility of doing so. So I think it's sort of, if we're trying to create a more equal world for black people, for any other minority, then, we can't just sit on the sidelines, you know, and expect people to educate themselves on this matters. So I do think we don't have a duty, we do have responsibility to do right. so. can I Can I say something here? And, and this is to make it very clear. Like, there is no such thing as race. Like, when you say black, white people, it doesn't exist. Like, it really doesn't exist. Mandem in the 17th century thought, you know what, yeah, you look, you are darker than me. By the way, also, just, just highlighting, like, if you look at the ancient Greece, which is meant to be the foundation of European civilization, there were black people there. What made you Greek was not your color of your skin. It was the fact you could speak Greek or which city, city state you were from. So this concept of black and white is a myth. It doesn't exist. Now, if you want to look at cultural difference, now we can talk. So I think we need to be careful that we have created a system whereby it's like me saying, if you've got blue eyes, you are intellectually a genius. That's a lie. And we've built up a system, a whole system for 400 years that has made this lie into reality. Now, we have to also understand racism. Racism is the actions or the belief 
that this fake system exists and therefore I'm going to act and build structures that will stop my guys with brown eyes from succeeding. That's what it is. So it's either you play the game or you don't. And what does racism really, um, uh, how does it really impact us? It is one, you go to work and they say, bruv, uh, you've got brown eyes. But just to say, you're a waste man, yeah? And therefore I'm not gonna give you a promotion because you've got, you got, you got brown eyes. Now, it could be my duty to educate you about the pyramids, about Monomatapa, but that's not gonna keep my job. Racism is the, 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 the power plus the privilege. Do you see what I'm saying? I can try and educate you out of being prejudiced against me, which is great. I, I'm, I'm, that's why I say you should understand your heritage and culture, because a lot of white Europeans know our culture and history better than we do, because we were never taught it. So they can start to say brown eyed people, X, Y, and Z, because we don't know, left and right. So if we know that, we know, okay, this is prejudice, we know this is true, this is false. But when it comes to the power bit, how do we have a problem? Because yeah. you can fire me, and I can be saying, I can call the anti-racist police, but it means ultimately <laughs> nothing's going to happen. So it meant my duty to educate you about the, how great my kingdoms were, but when it comes to power, bruv, only way I can employ you can I make you do, do what, what I want you to do. Yeah, um, the, the idea of race is a social construct, but so, so is many things. Uh, a lot of things are social construct. I think we, as a species, we don't con construct them because they're, in some cases, useful to us. But the point is, just because races, races don't exist, and most anthrop anthropologists would agree that there is no, and scientists would say they, there are no like races, quote unquote, but that doesn't mean racism doesn't exist. That's racism exactly what I said. Racism, I definitely agree. Def racism exists. Race just doesn't. Trying, oh yeah, I just want to be, be clear that people are like, conflating the two. Racism does exist. I mean, that's, that's been the history of the African-American experience in the US and to some extent in, across the British ex Empire has been built on racism and even the Jewish people in Nazi Germany, etc. So racism does exist, even though their races may not uh, yeah, I just wanted to make that point. No, I think G Day um, and Michael. Yeah, I think it, it is good food for thought in regards to kind of shaping that conversation, G Day, to say that it's not necessarily a duty but a responsibility. And it's interesting that that kind of concept because I think there's this African saying that you could take the horse to the river, but you can't force the the, the horse to drink or something. I think I think I think that that that's it. So so and and really just going back to the point that I'm making. And just adding to some of the stuff that Michael said regarding racism and that white, white privilege and acting on that, oh, sorry, the, the privilege that you have and the power and acting of that is what forms that racism. And us not having that power is very, because you have that response. I, I just find it difficult even shaping in a responsibility side because just using that example of taking that horse, that horse has to be prepared. I could sit there and guard that horse. And I'm like, you know what? You're not running anywhere. I've caged you in but I can't force you to drink that water. So if you're talking about responsibility in that side of it, yes, I'm responsible for the horse. Yeah, I'm there, I'm like, okay, cool. You stand by that river. You're not getting anyone until you drink that water. And even bringing that into a practicality sense, we can't even do that as black people, in honesty, we can't do that. But let's just say that we can't do that. Even if we can do that, I'm just standing there just waiting for this horse. How long is this horse going to take to drink that water? That horse has to say that they want to drink that water. Because if that horse has not acknowledged that, you know what, I'm thirsty, I need to drink that water, they're not doing that. Because the question is, what is in it for me? That's how sometimes I see these things. So if you want to do something, sometimes you need to go out there and you really like, go for it. Like, just sitting there and saying that, oh, people, you're responsible. So I'm not too sure about that, GD. And I, I just needed that example to shape what I'm trying to think here regarding how you wanted to shape that conversation. I hope that makes sense. Um, right. Yeah, it, it does make sense, but then you just said something quite interesting there. You said, what is in it for you? I mean, seriously? A, a, a more just world, a world where people don't have implicit bias, oh, no, 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 systemic no. discrimination, it's not something in it for you? No, 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 it's not that. I'm saying that the host drinking the water, they will need to ask the host. I'm, try I'm trying to get in the mind of a host here. I'm not an animal. I'm just trying to get yeah? <laughs> Bear with me, yeah. What I'm saying, yeah, is that the horse has to kind of think in their head. Oh, you know, I've been I've been jogging around for a lot now. You know, I need to drink some water, and it's only at that point that it sets in that they're going to drink that water, and it's only at that point that I am ready. That my responsibility has has been fulfilled. But prior to that, 
All I'm doing is just making sure that the horse doesn't run away from the river, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it, it does make sense. And I guess it is true. Um, like, you can only impart knowledge. You can, like, force people to take it on board. But, you know, I think that's all I would expect for you to do is just try and, you know, try and explain some of the concepts to people. I don't expect... You can't, thought, you can't control people's thoughts. You can't force them to adopt... Um, your beliefs, your ideology, but you can attempt to convince them of a certain way of viewing the world. And if you yeah. can do that, then do that. You know, it's it's worth making the attempt to do so. It's like it's like saying if you have an, you have wealth, you 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 have a good job, you can afford to donate to ch some some charities. Just because you don't know that the money is going to a certain place or it's going to make people's lives better it doesn't mean you shouldn't, you know, donate to charity if you can. Um, so I think that'll be an, another a, a counter anal analogy, if you will, to the taking um, horse to the river. Yeah. You know, why, why did you use the terms responsibility? Why do you not say it's as a duty? Do you want to break that down, please? Yeah, because uh, duty has legal connotations. Um, and, and even it has philosophical and legal connotations. So it's like, it tends to me like a moral commitment. Like if you don't do it, then you're doing something, you're acting immorally. Whereas responsibility is, and also there's also this implication of supervision. Like there's someone towering over you, like the state or something is like, if you don't do it, then you'll have to answer to them. Or maybe even if it's a religious duty, if you don't do it, you're gonna have to answer to God. Whereas uh, responsibility, you can act of your own free will, and the only person you have to answer to is your own conscience. So that's that's. I mean, it's a semantic distinction because some people will say they do mean the same, but duty tends. Uh, maybe it's because of what what I do for for, for a living. Um, that my as soon as you say the word duty, I think of the. Um, in a legal sense, as a, a sort of legal responsibility. And, and, and just to add quickly before Mo kind of moves on, I know Mo's screwing me right now, mate. I'm sorry, Mo. But just to add quickly, when we talk about this whole education, whether it's a responsibility or duty, then we have to, then we have almost kind of agreed that they are ignorant or they do not understand what they're doing. Yeah, and, and, and that's the point. Well, I, don't, I don't accept that because they are not ignorant. This thing didn't just come from nowhere and all of a sudden black people find themselves in this situation. There's historical facts, you know, Michael's gone through some of them. Mate, so we can't then all of a sudden be like, well, we're this enlightened black people that we want to go around educating white people about the systemic racism that benefits them. I can't, come on. That, that, that for me doesn't even make much sense, in all honesty. I mean, most people would agree that like things like hating black people is wrong, but that's not the problem we're facing as as a society today. Like the that kind of racism is not what we're having to deal with. We're having to deal with, with structural racism, you know, disparities like things like stop and search, uh, the overrepresentation of black people in prison, the criminal justice system. Those studies that show that juries tend to come down harder on black defendants than they do on white defendants. Those things aren't perceived as racism by like the working class, average working class white people. They just see racism as um, when a white person refuses to hire a black person because they're black or when a white person calls a black person the N-word. And I'm just using uh, the relationship between black and white people in this situation. Like it could apply it across other ethnic groups. But that's how people perceive racism. So I think you there are nuances in racism that you have to you, you just have to educate people about because they don't think it exists the, some people think martin luther king ended racism and just now we're, we're just complaining about nothing we would we, we'll just never be happy so um and yeah they ig being ignorant is not a bad is, isn't an immoral thing it's not a sin to be ignorant you just, just don't have the access to the education a lot of the people on, the, on this cause have had so, you know, you have that privilege, if, if you will. So, you know, pay it forward, pass it on, and try and make the world a better place, if you can. That, that's all. You don't, it doesn't even require that much from, from us, you know. It doesn't, it's not too much of an ask to just educate people if we can. Yeah, no, um, I, I do definitely agree in terms of the, the, the identifying of the word duty and responsibility. 
Um, and then even in the whole responsibility aspect, I know Kojo was saying how the whole ignorance of white people, as in they don't know or anything like that. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen the Channel 4 episode where there's this school that tried to end racism. And it basically goes to a group of kids in year seven and they basically try to talk to them and tell them the difference between, uh, no, they basically separate them into different groups of white affiliation, black affiliation, and they talk about racism and how it is in society. And from watching that, I could see how these are, in, especially the white young kids, that they've literally grown up completely unaware, ignorant to the systemic racism and the racism that goes on around them and their other peers in their classroom might be experiencing. And then there's also the aspect of how the white kids have had to have their childhood. Uh, they've had the liberty or the freedom to continue having their childhood, whereas the other black kids or the Asian kids, because of experiencing racism and, and, and seeing it, they, they've lost their innocence a lot sooner or their childhood a lot sooner than their other white counterparts. And I feel in terms of the whole education side, again, there are generally some white people out there, as crazy as it may seem, that maybe because of the privilege that they're around, they've not had the personal onus or the, the thinking to think, oh, you know what, let me look into this. Let me look further into racism because it has no effect on me or in, or in my life. I wouldn't really be in the word responsible enough to look into this myself. So then could you, as another black person, feel that responsibility to help them? But I'm, I'm specifically talking about a white person or another ethnic group that wants to engage with you and know more about racism and institutional racism. So this isn't someone that doesn't want to know, this is someone that actually wants to know. I, I was going to just add in to, on top of what you said, Mo. Um, it's not even necessarily directly answering your question, but it's speaking about that show, The School That Tried to End Racism, because um, what what I saw from one of the experiences of one of the one of the one of the white kids is that his parents at home they taught him or they said to him that they just basically said to him he shouldn't discriminate against another person based on their race and, and it was left at that and that was it. And I remember in a conversation we had a few weeks ago, I said that I was educated in the UK. And I remember when I went to primary school and secondary school, I wasn't taught anything about black, about, about black history or even like the issues that stem from when it manifested into structural racism and that sort of stuff. I wasn't taught about that. And I had white kids in the same class who, 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 who weren't taught about it. So if they're not learning it from school and they're not being taught that stuff at home, then they're, they're inevitably going to be ignorant. That's, that's, that's not even a surprise there. So a lot of this has to start from um, education, as, as I said, within the school, because as I said, that young boy who, whose parents said he shouldn't see race, he's going to be ignorant. That's not really his fault. Um, he, it's, just, it's just what he's been socialised to and what he's been taught. I, I think what's interesting is it, it depends where you are in the country, but I, I don't really buy it um, because I have... I've traveled a lot, like in, in either for my work, or whatever it is, I've gone to different countries and whatever. And I always see this concept of, of anti-blackness, be it in Mississippi, be it in, in the UK, be it in New York, be it in Mauritania, be it in Madagascar, be it in Egypt. There's a common concept of anti-blackness. Someone's teaching this stuff. Where's it coming from? That's my point. Like, if we're saying you don't know, bruv, <laughs> where's it coming from? That's my question, yeah? And this is my point. You can say, la di da da, I don't know. But that's a choice not to know. That is a choice not to know. Because if you know about jazz, where'd that come from? If you know about rock and roll, where'd that come from? That's black culture. You know about that. But you don't want to know about the negative externalities of this system. So it's a choice not to know and not to engage. I'll give you an example. We've been knowing. You look at 1948. Dr. Henry, no, Dr. Dr. Charles, was it Dr. Kenneth Clark, Dr. Kenneth Clark, American guy, did something called the Dole Test, where he took a five-year-old black child, a five-year-old white child, put a doll, black doll, white doll, 
Tell me what doll is beautiful. Tell me what doll is ugly. Tell me what doll is naughty. Tell me what doll is nice. But they did this, this experiment, I think in the UK, they did it in, I want to say, two, maybe early 2000s or late 1990s. Yeah? The stats were the same from 1948 to 2008. Nothing's changed. Everything, the black doll was bad, the black doll was ugly, rare, 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 rare. So my point is, yes, I don't see race. Yes, oh, I didn't know. Okay, you don't know. Bruv, we, we, you watch TV. This is not the first. It, Brixton had riots. Notting Hill had riots. What, what are they writing, writing about? But we, we like, you choose not to know. It's a piece of action. That's what I'm saying. Last thing I'll say is, there's a quote that um, Edmund uh, Burke said. He said, the only thing necessary for triumph to evil is good men to do nothing. It's very convenient when good men don't want to do nothing. They, they don't know. You know. Let's be real. Just, 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 just quickly I, follow on. Can I, can you describe can I come in? I, I, I want to say that. There, yeah, it's called Wait, is unconscious no. bias, isn't it? Yeah? <laughs> exactly everything you mentioned there is unconscious bias. Unconscious bias is not actually a choice. I'm not sure if you're aware. Mm. Mm. Okay. That, that, that's, that's, why I wanted, that's why I wanted to chime in on, because I just wanted to say, like, I, I don't necessarily agree with the fact that it's a choice. You make a choice not to know. Because I feel like, as you said, Mo, it, come, it does come across as, say, unconscious bias. You could even use, like, stuff like, you could use stuff like, even, like, music. Like, for example, like, rappers or artists are using the word nigger in a song. Some people are hearing that word being used consistently. They might not know the history behind that. They might not because they haven't, because it's, it's, it's a socially accepted term that's used in music. And so they may not necessarily see, see a need to even look or even try and, like, work out what that's to do with. And... One on one say on one one hand you could say there's a, there's a certain level of ignorance behind it, but I, I don't think it's a choice not to know. I think I think how how it's how it's presented in a social setting in terms of like commercial music and that sort of stuff, I think it gives them th there's no reason for them to look at the history behind the word because of how it's used. There is no value in knowing. That's my point. Exactly. There is no, there's no there's no value. So if I'll give an example. Um, if you have a pain on your side, it's hurting. It's not too bad, not causing you real pain, but it's a little, ooh. Where'd you go? You go doctor, in it. You are constantly know something's wrong. You might feel a bit not feeling yourself. You go doctor to find out. So that is, that is, that's innate in us to go and discover. This is why human beings have gone all around the world. We are curious people and we like to create communities and we like to, we like to try and you know, um, uh, uh, protect and create communities that can that can weather the storms and the elements and all the risks and stuff. That's what we innately do. So all I'm saying is this, unconscious or conscious, you know, you feel, oh, something's not right. But the thing is, there's no value in knowing. Society doesn't value you knowing about black history. Society doesn't value you knowing that to treat black people bad because ultimately, whether you treat them good or bad, there's no reward. There's no sanction either. That's why my guy, the police officer, put his hand, listen, when I was in school, and they say, take your hands out your pockets, bro. <laughs> my guy put his hands in his pocket and knelt on a human being to kill him. Do you know how disrespectful that is? Like, seriously, do you know how disrespectful, all I'm saying is, whether the conscious, the conscious is now, is the subconscious, unconscious, subconscious is now conscious. Everyone knows it. You were saying, you watch TV, everyone's got a TV, you watch, you got internet, you, you know. So why go on now in it? Explain that. Didn't you spot uh, the irony in you quoting that Edmund Burke, that Edmund Burke line? Didn't you notice the you saw the only thing necessary for triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing? Now you're using that against um, white people who don't educate themselves against racism, but that could equally apply to black people who don't educate white. I people. never said white. I said I, I, absolutely, and this is my point: is that even the black, and that's why I said I have unconscious bias. And let me no, tell you, about my, I don't. Let me, I, as a black person, I I am and was racist to black people. No, it's facts. Not, Do you know why? Because I was educated that way. So I had to go and I'd find my subconscious and say, "Hey, there's something going on here. Let me become conscious and act correctly." Do you see what I'm saying? So it's I'm not saying about, that it's not, it's not about. I'm saying. If you have the tools to educate someone on racism, if you don't do that, then racism will continue to spread from one generation to another. So you're, you're sort of, you're fulfilling the, 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 the point of that quote from Edmund Burke applies in this situation as well as in that. I disagree. I tell, I, I could you also come in? I could you also come in? I've been listening to this conversation and I think, I think maybe 
the pain, I think maybe from the standpoint that you guys are coming from and just using the analogy that uh, Michael uh, used regarding having a pain, you know, if I have a pain, let's say, I don't know, Michael's my oppressor and I have that pain. Maybe what you guys are saying is that I have that pain and I need to let Michael know to understand the pain that I have. So he feels sorry for me in order for him to stop oppressing me. I think maybe that's what you guys are saying here. Yeah. And maybe you guys could answer me later. Let me let me continue anyway. So when, when we're talking about when when we just delve down into this thing a bit more, because for me it's always coming from the sense of ignorance. And I'm telling you that this has been designed on purpose. It's almost like I am inventing something. I've invented something, right? I don't know how many years later. Then I go to Mo. Mo, can you explain to me how I invented this thing? What do I mean? Do I, do you need to explain to me? I invented it in the first place. I should know how I invented it. Well, you should not tell me how I invented my own kind of bloody system. That doesn't make any sense. Guys, understand what you're saying here. Let's not talk from a point of ignorance. I do fully understand what is being said, that if you are in a position to educate, you should. But we need to understand that this is systematic. This has been set up in a, it, um, it has been set up on purpose. We could go to Jim Crow. We could talk about all sorts. But also, we could even add religion to it. And you could add religion to it. And you, the, the, the craziness about religion, that you have this white Jesus, Right? You have a depiction of white Jesus, blue eyes, blonde hair. Like, but then the Bible that these so-called people read doesn't even depict him as this characteristic. So you told me, why did they do that then? Tell me why they did that. It's because of white supremacy, white privilege. It was done on purpose. Let's not, I think having this conversation from a point of ignorance, that's disturbing. Because all, all the history and everything will point you to the direction that this has been done on purpose. If you look at what Boris Johnson, Boris Johnson's response to the systematic racism in this country, to the murder of, 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 of an African-American in America was, let us have a review of a review of a review. Now, <laughs> he knows. My guy went to Oxford. He knows. He went, he, he knows. So that's my point is that ignorance is a choice. Yeah. And, and playing the fool and ignorant is a choice. And that's exactly why I use that quote, because a lot of, a lot of white people may not always see it. Yeah. Of the, it's like what Karam, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Jabbar said. He was basically saying that racism is like dust in the air. It seems invisible even if you're choking on it, until the light, until the, the sunlight lets it in or hits it, then you see the dust in your room. Exactly what, 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 what he said. Now, that is a perfect example of what the enlightenment that racism has had. You've had, you've had Chinese people attacking Africans. Okay, that's interesting. That's in China. Why are they Africans? Then you have my, my girl, Karen, with the, with the dog, Amy Cooper, yeah, who apparently was voting and helping Clinton, a progressive, yeah? She says, hey, a black man is telling me what to do. It cannot happen. And then she went to kill her dog and she went to call the police and went into a bush and was screaming. Then you had the impact of, of, police, of, of police getting involved, which is death. Then you have the suspicion of you can be someone who is, you know, playing by the rules. Your dog gets knocked it, not, uh, kicked down and you get shot in your bed like Brianna Taylor. So what I'm saying is we are now in a situation where, I'm sorry, you know, you can't be pushing T. Push a T said if you know, you know. Now you know. So this thing of subconscious, I'm conscious, you are conscious now. What are you going to do about it? And if you don't do something, then you're saying, uh-huh, actually, it benefits me as a man to see my women not getting the same uh, pay as me. Because guess what? It means I can take more pay. <laughs> so I'm going to let the system until I have a daughter. <laughs> and then I'll see me thinking my sign singing, we should have equality for women. Nah, bruv, you can't play two sides. That's my point. There are many books, there are many podcasts. We have, we have Google, we have um, Amazon, we have Facebooks, plural, and you told me that you don't know? Fam, you know. Can I, can I add into this quickly, yeah? Um, Jide, I wanted to raise your point. When you, when you quote, um, ignorant isn't a scene, would you, can you kindly elaborate into that? Because when you mention ignorant isn't it a scene, it's kind of hurt my feeling in that sense because when you're saying that is because the Western, for example, they've got the privilege to educate themselves. And then you've got part of the continent, Africa or Asia, they don't have the privilege to educate themselves. 
So when a white person or the Western have the, the privilege to educate themselves, and then on top of that, the insulting, on top of that, they are being racist. So how would you justify that? If you don't mind elaborating to that. Okay, um, a few problems with you. Uh, you're making a couple of assumptions here, which I think are highly pro problematic. First, you're assuming like um, every just... I guess it kind of goes back to a, a problem I really have with the Black Lives Matter movement is this and the idea of white pri privilege, the idea that by virtue of being white, you're just, you have the best things in life. So I think you're making that mistake right now by just assuming just because you're white, you can educate yourself on matters of race or systemic race, structural races. Some people, especially people up north of England, are just that that area of England was decimated by the policies of Margaret Thatcher and John Major, etc., that came after. So um, they don't have um, like for instance, data shows that a lot of them don't go to university. They drop out with very few G few GCSEs. They start working blue collar jobs. Do you think people like that have time to sit on Wikipedia? and start reading about the transatlantic Atlantic slave trade, the Birmingham marches, you know, the Civil Rights Act movement, all and all that stuff. They haven't got time to, to read about that. They haven't got that the class, that they're poor, they're, they're dirt poor. So a lot of them don't have time to educate themselves on these sort of issues. And it's from one generation to the next. Your, your father hasn't got, your, neither your father nor your mother has gone to university. They both work blue collar jobs. They're barely making ends meet. They're making under 20 grand a, a, a year and then so on and so on and so forth. And it's a tragic thing. And that's why I don't think it's, it's more of a tragedy than a sin. So if- um, Jide, Jide, sorry, so, Jide, Jide, yeah. Jide, I think you're, you're, you're not understanding my point. I'm elaborating into the ignorance side. Right? Yeah, so US, Western, what we, we, yeah, wait, what I'm trying to say here, Western world, right? They've got the tools to educate themselves. They are saying they are, they've done so many histories. They know what they're doing. They are written so many books. So they've explored. You've got the great, you've got the British Empire. So that alone, they should understand about racism because they're the one that's starting all the revolution, right? That's what I'm getting into. And then you've got part of the Africans and you've got part of the other Asian side of the continent right? They don't have those kind of great uh, power or empire. So mm -hmm. therefore, would you not say that the a British empire, because they've had that empire, would you not say that the ignorance isn't a sin, that it is kind of contradicting yourself because they should, by law and by right, they should understand what they are doing because as what Koji just pointed into, there is a system that they have embraced, and it's a system that they started it from start. So when you're mentioning ignorant isn't a sin, all of us as a human being, we don't want to be associating ourselves with ignorant. We want to be saying that we're very intelligent creatures. So for you to use that statement, I find that really not good as me as a human being to say that. Um, and Jide, just before you oh, respond, Jide, just before you respond. I just let you guys know we are rounding off soon, yeah? So we're closing okay. off in a minute. There's just been a few messages in a group chat, man. Maybe mm. I should go to some of them. Um, someone is really calling for you to apologize, Joe. Massa, just apologize. Let's move on. <laughs> someone asked a question here to say, you guys are trying to understand white people when we need to be questioning them. So are we trying to understand white people? Because we cannot understand white people because I guess we're not white. Is that what we're trying to do here when we're talking about duty or responsibility to educate? Yeah, no, I'm just saying it's, it's, it's completely opposite. The main thing is getting them to understand us, not the other way around. Um, but just to follow on in terms of what Jide was saying, um, I think when he's talking about ignorance, he's talking about the mass general public. Every time you guys are saying, oh, doing these books and whatever, whatever, you're talking about the top level, the ones that are setting up all the institutions, whatever. But in terms of the people you are going to encounter every day and stuff like that, there is that general ignorance. I think that's what he was kind of following on in that sense. If I'm right. No, I don't. Yes, I, yes, don't yes. I, I don't accept you that. You're right, Mo. Thank you. <laughs> say no more. Thank you. That's it. Uh, Someone's disagree. saving their skin. Uh, uh, let's do this. I'm the one that's missed the picture. Wait, wait, wait. Let's get Michael to come in. Let's get Ali to come in. Um, Ludipo, did you want to come in before I let them come in? Because I know you just mentioned a comment yeah. here. 
Oh, I'm just saying, like, I feel like we're making the whole thing a bit overcomplicated. Like, I'm, I've been listening the whole time. I don't think it's that deep in that sense. I feel like at the same time, we just need to clock that. Look, they're white, we're black. If we look to our own peers, we don't even know about our own selves. To the degree that we can come to someone and say, oh, you know what? You need to do They can look at us and be like, what? Who are you? Who are you to tell me? And I, one thing I've clocked as well, we're in their environment. Like, it's, it's not, we're not playing by our rules. Like, it's, it's their techers. And if we come in thinking that we're going to be switching up this and that, they're not going to have it. How long has this, been, this thing been going on for? It's been going on for too long. I feel like, in, in hindsight, we need to look to ourselves and see as a community what we're really, really trying to do. And look, sometimes yeah, you can even go down the road, you'll see another black person. I'll, I'll do this now. I'll try and nod and just be like, yo, like some people will be looking at the floor, looking away, not even trying to engage in that kind of repertoire, just that community of just that understanding your pain, like the same kind of people. How can we go to someone on the other side of the river and expect them to consider us? It's going to be very, very, very difficult. But at the same time, it's something that can be done. So I wouldn't say it's our duty. I feel like when it's time to be said, yes, understand that you need to say something and be willing to say something, but you can't be having it in your back of your mind that, oh, I need to go and tell this man this, and this man that. Or you're gonna be tired. You're gonna be, you're gonna be wasting your own time and your own energy. I feel like you need to concentrate on your own self. So I feel like to bring real change, you've got to have some form of integrity. And I feel like as a black community, sometimes we lack that and they take advantage of that. And they try to then do pass and then they come to the media they come with all this stuff and then other white people will see that and be like, you know what, that's so true because I've seen a conglomerate of them act in a certain way. So then that unconscious bias will then be like, all black people are in that yeah. box and then it's a never ending cycle. It's just a knock on yeah. effect. That's just how I feel personally. I think a lot of people agree with you in the comments that I'm seeing so far. Can I get Michael to come in? We'll get Ali and we'll get Gabriel. The comments are hotting up now. Yeah, go on, Michael. Yeah. You want to add? Yeah, I do, I do, and and the reason why I disagree with the masses is, is, um, it, you you can watch both both media. You watch this as England, or you watch. I love these Facebook, um, these Facebook exposés. I watched this northern guy who was jealous that his girlfriend, ex girlfriend, was speaking to a black guy, and he was literally abusing her. Dropping, how can you sleep with this n word? How can we end this n word? And she was filming it, filming it, filming it. Yeah, guy was dropping n word bombs. Yeah, I don't even say that word. Two twos, yeah, she puts online. Next thing, he comes on saying, oh, you guys know me, man. I'm not a racist, you know. You know I'm not like that. You know I've got black friends in. I'm not racist. So they, there is the automatic knowledge about racism. There is a, they, they know it. You know, black people go to the north too, bruv. We go past the north of the wall, we are there. So you can't have the excuse of saying, oh, they can't afford things. But I know people in Congo that, are, that, are, 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 that read by candlelight and they have one, one bendry, one, 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 one millionth of what the kind of wealth or access that this country has, yeah? So ignorance is, ignorance for me is a sin. Ignorance is a sin. If we don't know, you die. That's what happens. Look at Dar Dar Darwin. Darwin said, if we don't evolve, dead breath. That's it. So by, by that account, all I'm saying is power, power respects power. If we really want to change the situation, let us invest in ourselves get true self-knowledge, build our empires, build our institutions, and then say, Mr. Conservative, I'm going to give you 20 million. I want these policies here, 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 sign here. And that's, and that's exactly how democracy works. That is, that you could, uh, Jide is closing his face. Go two weeks ago, there was a politician, a conservative politician, who just got sacked for doing a construction deal because he got given 20,000 pounds to change his mind, bro. This is how politics works in this country. So let's learn how the system works and let's influence it the same way it is in America, same way we do it in the UK, that's what I'm saying. All right, let's get Ali in and then we'll be going to some of the comments. Um, I totally understand, but the question is, is it our duty to, um, to educate people on racism? Definitely not. And Michael just touched into it and especially also like people as well touch into that as well. What we need to understand is, yeah, um, we are African, shall I say, I'm not talking about the part of um, Caribbean side, it's just Africans. Africans, we are primarily the second generation that we're growing up here. As what Lad Deepo says, this is their country. It's not my duty as, a, as an African man. I'm working nine to five, I'm very exhausted. I've seen an incident 
just uh, uh, around the corner and then I've witnessed it and then I'm going to tell that white person, listen, what you've just done there, what I've just witnessed is that's racism. They'll just look at me and laugh because at the end of the day, whether or not they're ignorant or they don't want to listen, at the end of the day, the way they will see it is my country and what? I've got the law, I'm privileged and what? It's like me going to Africa in my country, Sierra Leone. When I go to Africa in Sierra Leone, I feel very comfortable. I feel very like welcome. I feel like I have the privilege to do anything or to say anything. So when a white person doing any incident in my, in my country, I feel the right to tell them, you know what? You have to do what you need to do. You can't do that. That's the same thing goes on for us here, right? Yes, they've got yeah. l- laws by laws or so on. But at the end of the day, I feel it's not our duty. It's for us to educate our children, for them to understand what the consequences, for them to, for us, our children to understand what it is about racism, we need to do that. It's our own duty. But I don't feel like it's our own duty to educate another child or another person that is it's a growing man, it can be my uncle, my dad, my whatever. It's not our duty, period, because they're the one, they've, they've set up, they've set up the left, the, 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 the left, um, the pyramid. They've set it up, right? They've set it up. They knew what they wanted to do. They know the agenda. So I don't think it is. I think it's just, as what that Vipo says, it's just we're making it very complicated. It's just a simple thing. It's not our duty. Convo's heating up. I got you there. <laughs> people, people are flying in comments, mate. But and, and, and also, just people. also, just to remind everyone, we're kind of moving away from the duty word and more in terms of responsibility, because we understand in terms of everyone unanimously unanimously disagrees with the word duty, but maybe responsibility might be a more kind of uh, suitable description to describe it. Um, yeah, go on, Kodge. I have a comment here from Gabriel. I'm not sure if you would like to chip in here at some point, but um, the comment reads, racism and race talk will stop when black people stop the mentality of entitlement and realise that racism will never stop. We can only grow from it. Okay, just going on to RJ Armour, I agree, we need to work on ourselves as a community. Historically, we are behind most of the races when it comes to that. Um, and I've got no name. No name wanted to add to this. Um, no name when you're you ready to chip in at this point? Yeah. I just wanted to say a couple of things really quickly. Um, so basically, obviously, we've established uh, duty versus responsibility. Um, I think that's just a game of semantics. I understand that um, Jude said that he feels that it's different. But I think in a wider understanding of people, most people feel that duty and responsibility are pretty much the same thing. I have a duty to make sure that my child has food and is well-fed and looked after in the same way that I have a responsibility to keep him alive. So, for me, I would say no. Um, also, in terms of, I'm trying to go quick because I know time's going. Um, I feel like we're talking a lot about like racism and like instances of racism and maybe personal experiences and structural racism. But I think that one of the biggest things that we are missing is that we actually need to focus on dismantling the system of white supremacy. Everything goes back to and falls back on the benchmark of white supremacy. Supremacy it is the growth of the disease that is racism and it is the growth of the disease that is the class deprivation between people. Because I heard someone talking about, oh, but the white people in the North. Yes, what you have to understand is that race and class are so deeply woven and interlinked within this country specifically that sometimes people can turn to that argument. But really the problem that we're dealing with is white supremacy. We do not have time at the moment to be worrying about poor white people in the north of England, yeah? Although, ultimately, we can come to a time in a more just world where we can fight together, yeah? But I kind of feel like it's not about um, class here. This is, this is the argument that's come out. The argument has, that has come out is about how do we dismantle white supremacy? It is in our language, it is in our food, it is in our education. It is in our preferences, it is in our dreams, it is in our fantasies, it's in the way that we speak, the way we view ourselves. And it's not a country by country thing, it's a worldwide thing. So this idea of white supremacy, if you think of um, the, the, the British Empire conquering over a hundred countries, yeah, and spreading this, this disease of white supremacy as a tool for them to use and abuse, rape and, and dehumanize people, 
we're not talking about individual instances of racism. We're not talking about just, uh, uh, you know, semantics. We're talking about how we view ourselves, how the world views ourselves on a deeper, deeper level. It is in everything. And if we really want to tackle racism, what you really want to be saying is we need to dismantle white supremacy. That's kind of just what I want to say. Uh, I really do like what Michael was saying in terms of us educating ourselves and understanding our history. Um, I know Michael's got an organisation that does exactly that. So I just wanted to give him a literal quick two minutes if you can just tell everyone about that, um, put in a message, a link, or how they can find the details and stuff like that. And sure, then, sure, 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 sure. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Um, so I'm, I run an organisation called A Tribe Called Progress because what it basically says is that all the divisions that we usually put on blackness, I am Christian versus Muslim versus Igbo versus Ghan versus Ashanti, it hasn't got us anywhere. What we need to be focused on is progress and, and, and commit to that. So um, every year we do about two or three courses on black history, but also black progression. And also I have a private Facebook group, which is focused on how do we create empowerment? How do you create economic independence? And also what are the actions we can embed in our day-to-day -day lives as you build um, systematic progress. And also actually on the side as well, I'm actually partnering with um, an ally of mine, um, who's done a lot of work on the anti-racism front. She's a white woman from Sweden. Um, and we've set up a private group for white allies that want to really understand what race is and the impact of white supremacy. Um, so they can go there. They can ask stupid questions because, again, some people just don't know. But I'm like, you will know now. Connect to the group. Connect to do the resources. Ask questions to be answered. We reward people that make their effort. So those are two practical things that I'm doing to try and further the discussion and make sure that we ultimately can progress. Uh, if you want to connect with me, um, you can go to um, www.atcp.co and just either sign up to the newsletter um, or drop me drop us an email that we can go from there. No, oh, thanks for that, Michael. Really, really, really useful information. Um, I know we have Audrey listening. Yeah, I've been listening intently. It's been a really, really good discussion. Um, I have to say, I completely agree with everything No, Na no Name said earlier. The woman that spoke before. Um, I. I just completely agree with her sentiments. I don't actually really have anything to add to that. I think before we can think about doing anything, yeah, it's the system. It's the system that needs to come down. And without dismantling the system of white supremacist patriarchy, we really, there's very little we can do to move forward. Um, I've always said for me personally, I'm tired of teaching white people about racism. I just want to propel us forward as a race and how can we empower ourselves so that ultimately we're not relying on white people so much. And I think that that's part of our problem is that we have, um, we, we almost beg for them to see our humanity. And I personally am tired of it. I think I probably speak for most people when I say that, do you know what I mean? And it's just that, like, I think I just came to the realization a long time ago that I don't think white people ever see the humanity in us. And so what can we do? I just feel like empowerment is, is the way forward personally. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Thumbs up. I hope you saw that. Um, mm. I'm, seeing, I'm seeing gunshots from people on there. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know time is against us, so if you want to wrap up, this would be a good time. I know g -Day, g -Day is crying in the background. G-Day wants to come in so much. <laughs> but yeah, um, if there is time, Mo, it's up to you. If there's a bit of time, we could give uh, g -Day a bit of segment before we close off. Yeah, no, go on, Jude, go on. You say a few words then. I mean, I, I think it's all, but I'll probably just be repeating myself. But it's just, um, I feel feel like I'm being um, misunderstood. Um, but I just want to make the point about, you know, this idea of we don't need to educate them. But I, I don't know if, without me to sound condescending, but in case last time I checked, this country was still a majority white country. And if we were to get anything, been done in terms of meaningful policies enacted that would see real changes in the country we need them on side so we do need that like, we, yeah we need them on side and without that without trying to speak to them and convince them to see things the way they are saying that they're injustices they will just be remain they'll remain oblivious to it and keep voting the way they do and nothing is going to change so um I'm not sure the whole idea of black people going their own way in this country is going to work. You do need a broad, multiracial 
coalition to get things done. You do need to work with people on the other side of the aisle. And also on the issue of class, um, yeah, so there are studies that show that a lot of the problems black people experience structurally are faced by white working class people. Now, black people and other minorities are about 40% of working class, but I just think there's a, there's a, in, there's a relationship there that not everything we experience as black people is necessarily race as the consequences of racism alone. Some of it is just class, the result of being poor, of being, um, not having opportunities. So it's just something to, to, to consider. Not everything is white supremacy. Some, things, some things are just class supremacy. I just want to round up that coming into this conversation, I was ambivalent. I wasn't entirely sure where I stood on the spectrum. And I said, yeah, I didn't necessarily think we needed to have a duty. Um, but I think a lot of what you said, Kodja, about th there's a system that's been set up. And, you know, the same people that we're, we're talking about trying to educate, they're completely aware of that system. But then obviously people have also spoken in the conversation about dismant dismantling that system. But I also agree with what Jide was saying, because what you need to understand is, it is a, yeah, you can dismantle the, white, the system of white supremacy, but what you need to understand, we're in a country where the majority are white. So in terms of being able to enact any real form of change, dismantling the system is not going to happen in this country. That's just not going to happen because it, it doesn't benefit the majority, if, 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 so to speak. So it's about trying to, it's, tr it's about trying to, as, as Jide said, trying to find a coalition of people on our side that are able to sort of help enact or negotiate some form of change. For me, for how I would conclude is, I reckon, <laughs> personally, um, I think that <laughs> Ali, everyone, maybe let me go. Let me go while you cover your thoughts, because Michael just put something on here that Mike said bleach it, or you are just like <laughs> should I go? I, I'm ready to just wrap up. Yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on. Thank you for listening to the LDM perspective. Please come and continue this conversation with us on our social media platform, Instagram at LDM Perspective. You can also get hold of us on Twitter, Perspective at LDN. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube page, which is LDN Perspective. Once again, thank you for listening. Goodbye. Perspectives, different views, one, one voice. voice. One voice.